Welcome to Paint Cool Stuff. This is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio, and today we're going to do a really cool project. I'm going to do this kind of line art mech, sort of mostly line art with a little bit of flat color and shading. It's going to be really cool, so let's just dive right in. So as usual, the blank canvas is the hardest part of any project, so I'm just going to dive in and start making marks. Now, with a machine design like this, I like to design with silhouettes rather than just going straight to a sketch. This is useful for a lot of reasons. The silhouette is really kind of the most important part of a machine design. It's how we kind of get our gut reaction, the thing that your brain sort of registers the instant you're looking at it for the first time. It's all wide open right now. I'm just sort of scribbling things around, trying different tools, erasing away, transforming things, just trying to come up with some shapes that look cool. As we go on, I'm, I'm just sort of doing some fine tuning, kind of making sure all of these main masses of this robot interact well with one another. I wanted to have a cool balance. I wanted to have a really dynamic, kind of aggressive pose. I think I'm going to end up giving it a gun, make it kind of a, a war machine. So I want it to look sort of threatening and intense. All of these design choices are following that. As you can see, it can be really useful to divide these silhouettes into different layers if you want to try different things. So just to kind of separate the arms from the main body, I've got a few different silhouettes working. That's basically all I was searching for with all of this scribbling is just a few things that I really like that I can kind of pivot off of and sort of design the rest of the shapes around that. So that's what we've got here and I've got some line art in the works already just to start defining things beyond silhouette, sort of defining these interior shapes
we're sort of starting to really define the look, kind of the design language. What, what kind of shapes and repeating forms really make this guy up? And once you have that decided, a lot of this is kind of just almost feels like you're, you're filling in the blank. You've, you've got a lot of empty places on your robot that you sort of just need to repeat a lot of these design elements over and over again in, in kind of a thoughtful way until it all just sort of starts to be one unique cohesive element. Starting to define some of these interior shapes and add some little accents. These little vent holes and little uh, kind of pill shaped things that we see a lot, those are always a great thing to include in a robot design. Any kind of a machine like this, they would be making heat of some kind. So little vent holes, little ways for the heat to get out of the robot, they just add a cool little design accent and they also just make it make sense in terms of the engineer. So one more element that I want to design a little bit separately is this big like laser gun that I want this robot to be holding. So I've actually turned the canvas 90 degrees so that I can design this gun silhouette perfectly horizontally. This is way easier to do this horizontally because you can just hold shift and make a perfectly horizontal line. So we have our sketch finished. Our design is pretty much finished, so it's time to make this look polished and cool, and that's where the inking step comes in. That's what I'm working on here. So I've created a new layer group, 
I've even got a new brush that I'm using. It's got very tight spacing. So these lines are very fluid and thick and bold, just as if you were actually using ink. I want some of these elliptical shapes, kind of these round parts of the robot, to be perfectly round. So I'm taking the extra time to actually use the marquee tool to make these circular shapes so that they'll be perfectly round. So now we have got our main bold outer lines established, so I'm doing a bit of interior detail work. Now I've shrunk my brush a few steps down and I'm pressing much more lightly so that I can get lines that are a lot thinner. These are sort of accent lines, lines that just separate the forms in the interior of the shape, not these big thick outer form describing lines, but some smaller ones just to give us some, some hints about shape, maybe little seams where robotic panels fit together.
line art is actually way more labor intensive than a painting. A full color, fully rendered painting actually takes less time and frankly just less brain energy than this line art drawing. And that's because with line art like this, there's absolutely nowhere where we can hide details. So in a painting, let's say there was some area of a landscape, for example, that didn't really matter. You could sort of just hide that in some dark brush strokes. It could just be sort of a blurry thing that it doesn't really matter what it is. But in a line art piece like this, pretty much every single thing we can see, we have to describe fully with lines. We, we can't leave anything blank. Every bit of it has to be kind of designed out. It all has to make sense three-dimensionally with our perspective. It has to have the right design language. Nothing can really be hidden or just left by the wayside. If you've never tried something like this, there are some amazing, inspiring examples of this, this kind of family of artwork on Pinterest. So many great line art with, with kind of flat color robots like this on Pinterest. And with that, guys, I think our ink is finished. So if we wanted to, we could just call this done. But I want to add a little bit of flat color and a tiny bit of form rendering just to really make this look polished and give it a lot of pop, make it look really cool. I've filled in a base color using the magic wand tool, kind of selecting the outside and then inverting that so that I could fill in an interior silhouette. And now I'm just going to go around and define some different colors, some different parts of the robot that I want to be different colors, kind of depending on what material I think it's made of. Is it kind of a base metal panel? Or for this darker color, I'm making it the joints be sort of a, a darker metal color. Just cool ways to do some color design.
For now, it's it's a lot of grays and just sort of mechanical looking metallic stuff, but I really want the feature of this to have a just really bright, really bold accent color, and I'm going with this super burning bright orange. As some last steps, I want to do a bit of form rendering here. So I'm making a highlight layer and a shadow layer. Now I'm going with some soft airbrushy kind of marks to begin with just to give some nice soft gradients from light to dark but I also want to balance that out with some really hard cuts. I always like to do a nice mix of value edges. We're just going to add a little bit of, of pop and, and some highlights just to make parts of the metal look shiny, just to define our forms a little bit more, and it's really going to work well. So I'll start that up here on the head, and you can see that that yellowish color kind of just makes it look a little bit brighter. It makes the oranges look a little more intense, makes even these kind of black metallic parts 
look look kind of cool like they have a little shininess it, it makes the material a lot clearer Adding a cool little decal, some kind of a very quickly designed logo type thing to the shoulder, uh, some little kind of details for other parts of this robot. Adding a little bit of a bloom effect here is some very final polish, just almost to make it look like there's a light source behind him, adding a little bit of extra drama. Guys, with that, I think we just about have a finished product. This really came out really well. I love the color choices, the design, the line work, all really worked well. And I think it's a pretty cool finished product. So if you tried something like this, I hope you had some success too. And I hope that these techniques were really helpful for you. But that's it for the Line Art Mech Project. Thanks for watching. Until next time, good luck with your artwork.